Cat fans, welcome to Meowster Podcast. I'm Rebecca Zish. That's Tim Black. Hi there. Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I am great. Good. Yes. And we are here today to talk about, well, something. We're here to talk about dogs, apparently. Apparently. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but something that Surprise. Uh, was. Hello, dog fans. Made people upset. <laughs> dog, it made dog people upset. Yes. Uh, a couple weeks ago. Right. Uh, it's all over now. Everything's fine. Everyone's fine. Everyone, <laughs> Everything turned out fine. Yeah. <laughs> right. Nothing to get upset about. No. No. But what we're talking about is that there was a big announcement on, I think officially it was February 1st was the big announcement. Right. Um, that uh, this episode is going to go up on March 1st. Mm-hmm. Um, so just a month ago, there was an announcement that there would be cats at the Westminster Dog Show. What? And some people lost their minds. <laughs> some people said, eh, so what? Yeah. Some people said, I'm sorry, what are you talking about? <laughs> this means nothing to me in my life. Right. It turns out that because what people were imagining is that cats were going to compete. Right. In They're the Westminster gonna be Dog Show. Right there, right alongside them. Yeah. Yeah. On leashes, jogging around. Doing the exact same. Yeah. As we know, and we've talked about on this show, cat shows are nothing like dog shows. Right. And you could never have a cat compete. Like a dog. I mean, there might be individual cats who could compete sure. that way. But who they li- wouldn't. Who like to be on their leashes so much that they learn to trot <laughs> right. alongside you and stop and turn and yeah. all that business. But as a species, mm-hmm. domestic cats do not want to be shown that way. Right. <laughs> Right. They like to sit on a platform and be petted by a judge mm-hmm. and play with a little feather wand yeah. and, and then be told that they're perfect or not. That's yes, all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what they want um, in their their performance at a competitive show. Mm-hmm. That's all they want. That's it. So I don't think people really had to worry that much. No, I don't think so. And if they'd only bothered to read... The actual announcement, <laughs> they would have recognized. Yeah, and then they've been, oh, okay, that's that's all right. Yeah, well, because the, the way that journalism works, yeah, <laughs> is you've got to write your headline in such a way as to get attention, to convince people to read the story. Yes, but a lot of people don't go any farther than the headline. Yeah. <laughs> There's more to this story than just. Cats at the Westminster Dog Show. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so they were there. There were cats yes, there. Yes, indeed there they were. They were not competing for best of show. <laughs> no, they were Or best in breed or category or whatever. Not at all. No. They were part of a separate event mm-hmm. that happens every year yep. at the dog show. That's um, meet the breeds or yeah. get to know the breeds. Right. What I, I think it was called meet the breeds. Meet the breeds, yeah. right? So the Meet the Breeds event just allows uh, spectators to come down before the competition starts, a few days before. Mm -hmm. And they're not even necessarily dogs that are going to be competing. Right. They're just um, breeders that come in and show off their dogs, like, and get to talk to the public about why their dogs are the best. And it's kind of like what we did when we went to the cat show and right. interviewed people. Yeah, exactly. You know, and said, like, why Bengals? Right. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> why Scottish Folds? <laughs> <laughs> why Munchkins? And so this has been going on at Westminster for a long time. Mm-hmm. Also, in conjunction with that, they have now, at least for the last few years, they have an agility competition as well, and also just agility exhibition. Yeah. Um, and so some of the dogs that are more active breeds uh-huh. get to show off right. how they do that. Yeah. Um, so the cats were invited to be in the Meet the Breeds. Uh-huh. So they had they had all these different um, pedigree cat breeds, but they also had house cats. Yes. Which Tika, the International Cat Association. <laughs> Yes. Yes. We like to remind people. The, yes. Uh, you know, obviously supports and admires mm-hmm. house cats. Yeah. And so so that could have made some pedigree dog people upset who aren't used to that sort of thing. I could have. Like, I can what are these house cats hang doing on, here? What are these? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 
yeah, they had pedigree cats, they had house cats, and then they had cats that got to show off their agility. Yeah, they'd set up a special agility course just for kitty cats. Yes. What is so funny about this to me, though, <laughs> yeah, is that there were cats there that actually do compete in cat agility. Yeah. Which I think is great. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited by that, and I want to know more about it. Right. I didn't realize that there were competitions for cat agility <laughs> out yeah, there. Right. I feel silly for not knowing this, but I'm very <laughs> excited now. But they also had cats who had never done an agility course yeah. ever. Yeah. They invited the owners that were there to just take their cat over to the agility ring. Give it a try. See if they do it. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, the cat that won was a cat that had never done it before that day. There you go. It was see? a sphinx. And, ah. and the owner said that she was surprised that <laughs> that it happened. I have a photo here. I know this is a an audio medium, but there's yeah. a photo of a of a cat of running a through cat a, running through a tunnel. Yeah. Which I think is a great picture. It's a great picture. Where <laughs> what uh, news bureau put that out? Uh, let me give me just a second here. Oh, this is an AP article. Oh, so an AP photographer took that's a great photo. Maybe yeah. we can put that up for people. Yeah, it's an AP, it's an AP article about the there's a lot of pictures of dogs doing agility. Yeah. But uh there's a couple of couple of cat pictures too that they took. And there, there's another one and I uh I've seen the picture of the cat in that top hat the, that you're <laughs> showing right now. That Mr. USA. <laughs> yeah. Um I found some pictures of cat agility on the Catster website. Oh yeah. Um, the headline of their article about this was Cats Steal the Spotlight at Famed Westminster Dog Show. Oh, looky there. So this is a cat, the um, an amazing looking cat wearing a jacket of some type. It Misha, a sphinx. Um, this may be oh, this, this is actually the cat that won. This may be the same cat. It might be, yeah. Because this because this cat's wearing a jacket too. Yeah, well, this is the cat that won. This okay. is um Misha the Sphinx. Um, her owner or breeder's name is Blake Gibson. G-I-P-S-O-N. Gips. Gibson. It's hard to say. It is. It sounds yeah. like Gibson, no matter how you say it. <laughs> and it's described as performed like a sporty greyhound on the agility course. And this photo is amazing. It is. Her <laughs> getting this incredible height and uh -huh. actually looks like um, looks like a thoroughbred. Yeah. Actually going it really over does. Um, the, what do you call that when uh, horses jump things? It's steeplechase. That's right. Yes. What do they call that when horses jump things? That's <laughs> Thank you. That's what I just said. That's what they call it. And then um, there was a, there's a really cute picture. I don't know if you saw this one. This is a minuet kitten. Oh, I've not seen that one. Um, presented by breeder Samantha McConnell. Didn't quite have the courage or height to clear the obstacle jumps, but oh, no. she's trying. She she's is. a really cute little kitten <laughs> trying to get through one of these hoops they set up. She has a heart of a champion. That's right. And her tongue is sticking out because she's thinking about it really hard. <laughs> She would be it's good. concentration, just like uh, in the Peanuts comics when, oh, yeah. whenever Charlie Brown was concentrating. <laughs> she would be really good at kitten <laughs> sports, maybe. Oh, yeah. my, yes. And then, oh, that might be too, she'll be too she'll big be too big. before kitten sports come around <laughs> right. again. And then this is a Donskoy, D-O-N-S-K-O-Y, which is a breed I am not familiar with. Yeah, I've never um, heard of that. It says that this this cat opted to stay in her cozy blanket all day. Well, that's not a bad idea. They said that some of the cats, this Catster article is really funny. Uh, it says, not surprisingly, the more active cat breeds and those with a higher disposition to chase, Sphinx, Bengal, Bobtail, for example, typically around the course, or at least parts of it, with vigor and enthusiasm. Uh -huh. Some of the fancier breeds and prima donna personalities <laughs> tended to opt out of the competitive chase and sat atop the course's stairs, basking in audience adoration. Ah, I see. And I, I, somewhere else I saw pictures of that, of cats just like going to the top of mm -hmm. one of the staircases yeah. and then just sitting down. <laughs> Like, That's a oh, very cat thing to do. I have a do. better view up here. <laughs> I'll just stay here. But there's some great, great pictures of cats. Uh, if anybody wants to go to this, catster.com. Oh, there's a lot of good cat pictures yeah, there. Yeah, so there's um, one of the Persians that was on display. And here's a Bengal. And this Bengal, actually, Is I saw the, yeah. the Washington Post. Yep. Did you see that Washington Post video? Uh, no, I didn't see the oh. video. Well, the Washington Post did a whole, on their video, uh, where they do video news, uh -huh. interviewed this Bengal breeder. 
who, Anthony uh, Hutcherson? Yes, and he made quite a... Uh, he was included in the West, the official Westminster um, press conference. Yeah. And made quite a splash. And that was really how the national news picked up on this cat thing. Yeah. Was that one of his bangles was in the press conference mm-hmm. and was really took everybody's attention away from the yes, dogs. Yes, yes. And so that was, there were some dog people on Twitter <laughs> and stuff who were very upset. Very upset. <laughs> they were like, what was that cat doing drawing all the spotlight mm. at that? Um, but uh, the breeder, he is actually, if you go to yep. to the Washington Post and find their article about this, mm-hmm. um, you scroll down into it. There's a video that's embedded like two thirds of the way down. Okay. Titled Meet the Cats of Westminster. And it's like a 25-minute video okay. of the reporter who wrote this article. Uh-huh. Um, she had this breeder into a studio at the Washington Post. Okay. Because he actually lives in that part of the country. Oh, okay. So he was in that press conference, but then he went back to his home in wherever he lives, D.C., Maryland, right. Virginia, somewhere. Yeah. And so they had him in to the Washington Post, and they recorded this. He brought in three of his cats, mm-hmm. and he's great. They take live questions off of Twitter. I guess it's a it's a live thing they do at the Washington Post. Yeah. People can post comments and questions on the website and then also tweet them while they're on, and they answer the questions live. Okay. But he talked all about having the cats at Westminster, his uh-huh. specific cats being at Westminster. Okay. He ran his three cats through an agility course. He just created out of stuff they had there in that studio. <laughs> okay. So it's just like crates and yeah. uh, boards and things that just like the camera crew had lying around. Mm-hmm. And he, it was actually really cool. <laughs> um, and they also had one of those big wheels cats running. Sure. and. They're Bengals. Yeah. But they had a cameraman on every cat. Mm-hmm. So the whole time they're talking, he, the breeder and the reporter, yeah. you're watching the cats just explore this studio. Okay. And they're going under things and around <laughs> things. I mean, they're Bengals. Right. And one of them is only um, like a 14-week-old kitten. Oh. And the kitten is doesn't have a name yet. So they said, like, if you have a suggestion for a name, you can yeah. post it in the comments oh. at Washington you know, WashingtonPost.com. So it was very cool, but he talked about, you know, his cats have pedigree cat names. Yes. Jungle Tracks Abiding Ovation. Right. Um, so that cat is there if you want to watch this video at the Washington Post. Mm-hmm. But so is another cat, uh, the cat who at a recent show, cat show in San Diego, another one of Hutcherson's cats named Trapes Furiosa Impresaria. Wow won the agility portion of that cat show okay. and won $75. <laughs> nice. So I don't think cat agility quite has the purses attached to it as dog agility. <laughs> Not quite. Because I've watched some of that dog agility on yeah. ESPN2 and stuff over right, the years. Right, And it's all sponsored by big old dog food companies. Purina and, and whatnot, yeah. Yeah, and um, I think that's worth a lot more money than $75. Yeah, right. But still bragging rights. Sure. Yeah, so if you watch the video, you can actually see Trapes Furiosa and Presaria run the obstacle course that he just sets up there okay. in the studio. Fun. Um, but, also, but what's funny is that he sets out to have that cat run it first. Yeah. And he gets out a little feather wand. And the kitten comes, and the kitten's like, I'll do it. And the kitten just, like, goes, I go like this, right? And, like, up and over and around. And so, wow. but, I mean, they're bangles. Bangles, so you're going to get that with a bangle, yes. <laughs> Especially a bangle kitten. Right. I can't even imagine. That apparently seems to be the difference between dog agility and cat agility, is uh-huh. that the deal with dog agility is that you train your dog to run an agility course without touching them. Right. So you can't in any way lead them. Like, you can't, like, offer them food to mm-hmm. do it. You can't touch them to do it. Yeah. Um, you're supposed to do it just with vocal and hand commands. Uh-huh. And I, that's how I understand it. I could be wrong. There could be somebody listening who's like, Rebecca, you've got that totally wrong. Right. But that's what I believe to be true. Yeah. Like, you can, you can stand in the course with them, but you can't. You're not supposed to guide them. Yeah. They're supposed to know how to do it. Right. Right. With cat agility, they understand that cats really don't do much without incentive. Yeah. And so you're allowed to pull a piece of string. 
You're allowed to use a feather wand or a it's like they're hunting. Stick. Yeah. yeah, you're allowed to make them think they're hunting something. Yeah. But they still have to do all the agility things. They yeah. have to go up the stairs and across the boards and, and through, through the a hoops tunnel. And, yeah. and every time they don't do that, mm. they have um, time added to their time. Oh, just okay. like just like a dog. Penalty, yeah. Yeah, it's a penalty. Just, and just like when horses run steeplechases. Yeah. If they knock the what I don't know, whatever the, the it's called. Stick. The I don't stick. Know. <laughs> that would be a good name for it. If they knock the stick down. Yeah. And they do that with dogs too, because dogs are supposed to leap over things. And I right. mean, they make them higher yeah. too as they run through them. And so if they clip the stick with their paws, they get they get a time penalty. Mm-hmm. And so the same things are happening with the cats. Only you're allowed to say, come get this. <laughs> Come get the Nico flies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny though, because this guy, I mean, this this breeder, he has, you know, an agility winning cat. Mm-hmm. And even she, when he tries to guide her through this thing, she's like, I'm just gonna walk around this one. <laughs> <laughs> and then she gets tired and she just like sits down. <laughs> like, I'm done. <laughs> uh. So I think winning an agility competition with your cat it's just a matter of actually making it all the way through from beginning to end well one yeah, way or another i mean it's a matter of like <laughs> what time you get called up absolutely you know, i mean <sighs> yeah yeah if they if the cat just had a meal forget it yeah you can't right because they're not going to be they're not going to be hungry for the hunt no i don't want to catch that thing I'm i'm good i'm all right right yeah now. I'm, I'm fine i don't need <laughs> i don't need any of that business yeah when this first was announced there's a guy who wrote a satirical column hmm. for the Chicago Tribune about it. Did <laughs> yeah. you read this? I, I read a quote from it. Okay. So I went and found the actual article. Okay. His actual column. Uh-huh. So funny. So <laughs> this guy's name is Rex Hupke. Uh-huh. H-U-P-P-K-E. Yeah. Um, this was published in the Chicago Tribune on February 1st of this year. And, I mean, I could read the whole thing. Yeah. But what he does is he takes actual quotations from people representing Westminster, Mm. like official things from press releases. And then what this really is, is a it's a parody of the kinds of columns people are writing right now (laughs) about the news in general and how it relates to things that are going on in politics in the country. So, for example... He writes, I'm asking for an immediate ban on any feline seeking to enter the Westminster Dog Show festivities. We just need to shut it down until we can figure this thing out. (laughs) Let's consider the facts. This country was founded by people who loved dogs. It's an accurate historical fact, according to something I found on the internet, that a 25-year-old pilgrim named John Goodman brought both his Mastiff and English Springer Spaniel with him on the Mayflower. (laughs) There are also reports of a cat on the Mayflower, but I think that's just fake news. (laughs) (laughs) I have a quote I have here. It says, we are so far gone, so consumed by political correctness that unwanted and potentially dangerous outsiders are poised to put <laughs> one of our most cherished institutions at risk. Right. <laughs> uh, he writes, um, clearly canine appreciation is a key part of our national identity. And if we are to preserve that identity, we can't just let cats start racing across the borders of traditional <laughs> dog events. That's too good. <laughs> right? Yeah. He writes, um, how do we know that the dogs will be kept safe? Do we even know how these cats would be vetted before they're allowed into the show? (laughs) Do we have any idea where these feline invaders are from? It's possible some could be Persian. We just don't know. (laughs) Persian. (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, Oh, man. It goes on. I mean, I could honestly. It's so funny. That's very good. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So. But it goes on and on. I could honestly write the whole thing. Right. Um, he talks about how we should be jungle tracks, the cat, uh-huh. yeah, uh, that we should be tracking his social media accounts. <laughs> um, he claims he claims that a book called Garfield at Large is a species holy book. Oh and my. in it, there's a clear hatred of dogs that's, <laughs> that's laid out, <laughs> which, of course, would be Garfield not liking Odie. Right. Right. <laughs> It's also a love of lasagna a lo- and a dislike of Mondays. That's right. These could all these are very un-American ideas. 
It's just very funny. I mean, clearly he's kidding. Yes. Um, and he was prompted to do this, you know, both by what's going on in actual politics in our country. Yeah. But there were people freaking out. There were, because they didn't read beyond the headlines. Right. They were like, <laughs> what do you mean cats at Westminster? Harumph. <laughs> It actually turns out this is not the first time they've done this. Yeah. That all of the Westminster press says that a few years ago, Mm -hmm. they had cats at the Meet the Breeds event. Okay. And then they didn't do it again. Okay. And people have been asking, where are the cats? Ah. It's like all these dog people come in. Yeah. And maybe it's the only time in the year they get to see cats. It might very well be. And they're like, we wanted to see the cats. Where are the cats? So we're looking forward to seeing the yeah, cats. Yeah, so they got Tika back involved, and that's ex- that's that's awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for them. Yeah. There's also a really funny video that a reporter did for um for MSN. You know, it's just funny what you find. Like these are not websites <laughs> I ever go <laughs> right, to right. normally. But he goes in, and there and here's the thing: is the reporters who I've watched making these videos for their different online entities. Uh huh. They cannot keep themselves from the cat puns. <laughs> oh, no. I know. <laughs> We're so, we, we just got done saying how kitten football this year. They they did, started taking it easier on the puns. There were still plenty of puns out there, but uh, it wasn't, they didn't force it down your throat like in years past. No, but if you start looking for videos about cats at Westminster, yeah. you're going to have the same thing happen. So. <laughs> It's Charles Curtis from USA Today for the win. We are here at the 2017 Westminster Dog Show Meet the Breeze. And this year, there are cats. So let's go find out if they're getting along or if they're fighting like cats and dogs. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> at least it had the sound effect to acknowledge right? that it was. A... Yeah, I didn't <laughs> I didn't play any of the ones where they're just like, and it's a perfect time here at the <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I played that one because at least that guy understood what he was doing. <laughs> right. But that question about, like, are they fighting like cats and dogs, that was everywhere. Mm. People assuming. That they're all right there together or. Well, and they were all... kind of all right there yeah. together, apparently. But these are all well-behaved show animals. These are not. And that is what people say in that particular video that he, the USA Today reporter made for MSN.com. Yeah. That is what people say. Yeah. They're like, look, we are all uh, we are all people who love our pets. Mm-hmm. And we are all people who, with pedigree pets. Yeah. And that's a certain kind of person. Yes. And so they were they were definitely admitting, you know, that everyone is handling their pets well and we're all watching out for their own safety. Right. So I did find this pretty funny piece. Mm. This is on bravotv.com. And I don't know if this is a show on Bravo or just like an online thing they do. Okay. I've never seen this before. Yeah. But it's called Unleashed. Okay. It's a blog or something. Hmm. So they sent someone from Bravo down to the show. And so it says like, uh, despite a flurry of dramatic headlines leading up to this event, all of the felines were on perfectly fine behavior. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> there's some great pictures in here too. Yeah. So he gets quotes. So these cat people yeah. are saying like, well, the cats aren't thrilled about being here with the dogs. Okay. But they're okay because they're show cats and they're used to like a lot of business. For sure. Right? Sure. But then some of the dog people yeah. got them to say some stuff. <laughs> they says, um, according to this woman who has a Lhasa Opso. Yeah. I mean, I can say people's names. Her name is Stephanie Codis. She's uh, quoted right here. Okay. She says, I'm not a cat person, but I would think that they would want to be a little more secluded. <laughs> The dogs don't really care, but I don't know how uptight the cats are going to be. <laughs> it's like, hmm. Uh, really? Yes. <laughs> and a woman named Rebecca Graham. Mm. Uh, I don't see a lot of other people with my name often. So anyway, mm. <laughs> so I would stop and go, okay. oh. oh, what did so, she say? Rebecca Graham, the owner of two Welsh terriers named Gatsby and Daisy. Oh, clever. Yes. <laughs> told told us she intentionally avoided the cats on her way to her breed's booth. She says Daisy hunts cats. 
So I saw the cats and I was like, no. Oh, boy. And then she says, on the Upper East Side, many of the buildings have cats for the vermin. And she knows where all the cats live. She chases them. It's not a good scene at all. Wow. <laughs> She also said that she thought it was great that cats had the opportunity to be there, but it sounded like she didn't really, but there were everything else she said. So right, like, totally. Like they have cats to hunt vermin. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I, and she, she purposely <laughs> avoided going anywhere near the cats. Of course. Mm. Oh my. That just sounds more like, more like she doesn't know how to control her dog. Yeah, that is a say. problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, um. Cats being daisy. <laughs> it, I mean, it's cute, but it's a little on the nose. <laughs> Ringmaster Vicky Shields was interviewed in this piece. I couldn't find her interviewed anywhere else. Okay. She is one of the founders of International Cat Agility Tournaments, ICAT. So International Cat Agility Tournaments. Oh, ICAT. ICAT. It works. Yeah. Uh, with a lowercase i, like it's an oh, Apple product. It's, get get yeah. that app on your phone. That's right. <laughs> Uh, the agility, cat agility app. Yeah. I don't think that's a thing yet. No. She said that a lot of dog owners were were telling her, like whispering to her that they had cats at home. Yeah. Like it was a secret and they're not supposed to <laughs> really? let dog They don't want to admit know. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, she says, um, she says they whisper things like, I have three cats at home. And it's like they don't want to admit it. She Weird. said it's the funniest thing. That's strange. Yeah. But she was hoping that the next cat agility superstar would be discovered on Saturday. But she was realistic about her prospects. She wrote, or she said to uh, Bravo, mm. every cat here is new, completely, utterly new. And because this is meet the breeds, these are the ones that are pretty passive and happy and can be petted by the public and everything. And they're completely confused about being in an agility ring for the first time. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, she said cats who have trained and practiced will fly through a course in six seconds. Wow. Yeah. So it was pretty exciting. And they had a trophy for the fastest feline uh -huh. uh, sponsored by Dr. Elsie's uh, cat litter, which is the Cat Attract cat litter. Okay, sure. So that was cool. Nice. Um, but there's some really funny pictures in here that they took of. Um, so here's one cat being confused about something he was supposed to jump over <laughs> yeah. in the cat agility. He's just like sniffing it. Right. He's like, what is this? What am I supposed to do with what this? What do you want me to do stick? with this? <laughs> <laughs> and then here's a cat who went up, kind of up the staircase and stopped. <laughs> it looks more like she's hiding from a feather toy. Like she's planning to, yeah. planning to attack it later. Right. But doesn't have any plan to do anything with it. <laughs> Not right now. Right now. No. So, and then there's the trophy. So oh, yeah, that's a I thought handsome this was fun. Yeah, I thought this was fun. I didn't. This had a lot of information. I didn't find other places. Oh, good. This is the lady who Sphinx won that day. Oh, okay. Yeah. So again, we're looking at pictures that you can't right. see if you're online. But um, oh, okay. Playing with one of those teasers. <laughs> yeah. One of those cat show teasers. Yeah. And you can get a, that at the merch booth at any cat show. A giant bengal. Look at the size of that bengal. I know. <laughs> I know. It's almost like a savanna. It is. It's huge. Yeah. That cat's name is Jefferson. Oh, yeah. So I mentioned before, but the winner of the agility trials at um, the Westminster Meet the Breeds uh -huh. was a sphinx named, named Misha, but actually her pedigree name is Bemisu, B-E-M-I-S-U. Oh, okay. Or Bemisu. I don't know. They mm. call her Misha. Okay. She's one year old. Yeah. She had never tried an agility course uh, ever before. Yeah. And she she tried it a couple of times, and then she did it for competition. So she'd only been practicing agility for 30 minutes before she <laughs> ran it for competition. Wow. And she, there were 30 cats that competed in the end, and she... And she won. Her owner, Blake Gibson. Gibson, yeah. So hard to say. <laughs> um, was used a sort of dangling toy to that that she likes. Okay. To get her to do it. Sure. But I like this quote from her owner that says, I had no idea she would learn so fast. She's smarter than I ever gave her credit for. <laughs> And apparently she lives with a pit bull. Oh, interesting. In Denver. Okay. And they went all the way to New York to be part of the Meet the Breeds. So, so that's it's kind of cool. a big deal. 
Yeah, I guess it was nice to be invited. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine so. Yeah, I really, yeah, probably some really special cats from different cat shows that, mm-hmm. you know, have different ribbons and yeah. and stuff around the country were invited. Yeah. Oh, there. Um, they also talked to this woman who who owns the dog that won the dog agility there that same day. Uh-huh. About what she thought of cat agility. Yeah. This is actually for Channel 4 in New York that I'm looking at. Her name is Robin Lembo. Okay. She actually has a mixed breed dog that won the agility um, who was born in an animal shelter. So oh, nice. So must have had a, a pregnant mama yeah. who went into the animal shelter. Yeah. And she said that he used to be afraid of everything. They tr- started training him in um, agility to try to build his confidence. Yeah. And now he, he wins competitions nice. regularly. And he's eight years old now and he still runs agility. Okay. But she said that she keeps trying to get her husband to try cat agility because he's the cat lover in the family. So I guess they have cats <laughs> at home too. Okay. And so she goes out and runs their dog and agility yeah. trying, like, you know, I'm sure drives him around to different competitions right, and stuff. Right. And she's been trying to convince her husband to do this with their cats but i get the impression they probably just sit at home <laughs> <laughs> hmm, you think yeah yeah apparently cat agility the the icat organization was started in 2003 okay with a mission of getting people to just play more with their cats ah so we can get behind that yeah definitely yeah and i do it with clients sometimes uh-huh. when they have a a cat they're worried about like their behavior is just their behavior appears to me to be something that could be managed better if they got more exercise. Mm-hmm. So sometimes when I'm at clients' homes, we just start moving furniture around and seeing if the cat will run. Set up a little impromptu course for uh-huh. them to run. Yeah. Nice. I've done that a lot and people are amazed. Really? The difference that it can make? Well, just that their cat will do it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, I get to do something. Yeah, what? What What are we doing? Where do you want me to go? <laughs> and when they have that kind of energy, they definitely they definitely do want to do that. So, yeah, so I think this was fun. Yeah. Well, if I may quote David Letterman, for those people that were concerned about cats at the Westminster Dog Show. Yes. This is only an exhibition. This is not a competition. So, please, no, no wagering. No wagering. <laughs> <laughs> Probably no wagering, but, you know, I think this is good. I think that people, well, and I could be wrong, but I really do think that people who are that into dogs, pedigree dogs, they really don't give cats much thought. Right. And so being able to see the different breeds and especially the ones that were available, like you could pet them Mm -hmm. if you wanted to. And then getting to see them do something that people think is mostly dog behavior. Right. Is exciting. And maybe there are some people who might might also consider adopting a cat. Yeah. Especially some... if you're showing them in New York like that, where people tend to live in really small houses and apartments. Right. You know, right. a cat usually makes a better. Makes a little more sense in that environment. Some, I think sometimes, so. yeah. People will say no. They're like, my dog's fine here. You I'm, know? Sh- but... yeah, I'm sure that there are plenty of dogs that thrive in that kind of environment. But for the most part, in general. Yeah. The cat's kind of the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to take them all the way down your the stairs of your building right. to take them for you can you're take at, them for a walk if you want to. You're at an eighth floor walk up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you and your dog gotta go up and down those stairs. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. So yeah. that's what I think. I think that was cool. I'm glad they did it. And it's and I bet they're going to do it again. I bet they will, yeah. Because yeah. it it's took sound- them a few years to bring the cats back, but people were asking. So. Yeah, and it sounds like it, sounds like it was a, a positive thing overall. I think so, yeah. Yeah. A few, few dog owners who weren't quite sure. Yeah. Um, Nothing to get bent out of shape about. No. It's not like a, it's not like a, a, a Persian is going to win best of show at the Westminster dog show. No, it's not going to happen. these cats didn't come here to... <laughs> To catch vermin. No, no, <laughs> they did not. So, yeah, there you go. So if you were wondering what the deal was with cats at the Westminster Dog Show, that's the deal. That's the deal. Go play with your cats. Go play with your cats. 